back, relax, and maybe get yourself a snack. Me and you gonna have a little chat about books. Hi guys! So I'm here today to do a pretty big book haul. I must admit this is going to be one where you want to get a snack and sit back and relax. It's going to be a bit of a long one. I have accumulated quite a few books in the previous month or two. I'm not sure when I last did a book haul, however long it's been. Because of various publishers sending me things and me going to London twice, I met up initially with Joe from Final Blow Joe and Katie from Katie Loves to Read, I'll link their channels below, in London for a little book shopping day and a day of just chatting and hanging out. It was super good fun, the weather was beautiful and we had a really really lovely time and of course I bought some books. Then I went up to London again just last weekend and met up with a whole bunch of different people. It was lovely fun, I'll try and find a picture and put it for you and yeah we had a great time and again I bought some books. I had loads of fun, so naturally I decided I would just put all of them into one long epic video for your viewing pleasure. So let's get started. First up, I picked up the second one in this series. It is the Great Coat series by Sebastian D. Castell. I read the first book, which I've owned for quite a long time, in March, and I loved it, and so naturally I wanted to go straight on to book two, and I picked it up, and I've read this already. I gave it five stars. I'm flipping loved it. I'm so into this series and I am just so happy that I managed to read this as well before I film this video because that does not usually happen. So great one to have picked up first. I then picked up the third one in the series which is Saint's Blood by Sebastian de Castell. Again it's a beautiful cover, I love the cover designs. And this one I have not read yet but I am so very excited to do so and I can't wait because I know I'm going to really, really enjoy it. And judging from the way the previous books have ended, this one's going to be good. I've heard good things, so can't wait for this. Another one that I've actually read is the second one in the series. This is the Empire of Storm series. The first book is called Hope and Red, but this one is Bane and Shadow by John Scovron. I actually did a buddy read of this with Michael and we had a great time talking about it. And this is a really fast paced sword and sorcery. Definitely very fast paced. If you're looking for a quick read, this series is that. Whereas the Great Coat series, which is also Sword and Sorcery, is a bit more heavy on the humour and the fun and, and the poking jibes at one another and it's just great. So both are epic, fantastic series. I've already read this and I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars and I read this this month in fact, in April. The next three books I got in subscription boxes. The first one I got is Bruised, which is by Sarah Skilton. I don't know an awful lot about this because I got it in the subscription box. I'll put a link below to the Book Buddy Box shop if you want to get a copy of this because I think maybe there are some more or the next month's one is there. And the next two books I have were my Moth Box books for March. This is 100 Shadows by Huang Jungen and this one is Little Nothing by Marissa Silva. Both sound amazing. If you want to know more you can watch my unboxing where I go into details but I'm really happy to have both and I hope to get to them very very soon. Now moving on to a few books I was kindly sent by publishers. The first one I have is Cold Welcome which is by Elizabeth Moon. I've never read any of her books but Orbit sent this one out to me and it sounds definitely like my kind of thing. I think it is a science fiction which is kind of cool because I thought for some reason that she was a fantasy author. Maybe she does both, I'm not sure. But it sounds a lot of fun. It's about a woman called Admiral Kai Vata who is a war hero. When she is returning to her home planet, her shuttle is sabotaged and she gets marooned in a hostile landscape, as you can see from the cover, and she has to somehow manage to lead herself and her crew, or what remains of the crew, to safety. So it sounds a lot of fun, hopefully something that I will enjoy. The next one I have, this one is also an ARC copy, and this one is called The Waking Land by Callie Bates. And this one was sent to me by Hodder and Stoughton and I've never heard of it until it turned up but it sounds kind of fun so I thought I would give it a try. It's a kind of fairy tale esque story about a young girl called Elana who is taken hostage by King Antoine for 14 years and then age 20 she is about to become a prisoner once more but this time by her father who plans to reignite a rebellion using Elana as the figurehead for that rebellion and apparently there is love and war and drama so yeah 
we'll see. The next one I have was sent to me by Tor, and this is The Guns Above by Robin Bennis, which sounds very much like a steampunk story that I'm so down for. I've not really read any steampunk this year, but I really, really love it when I do read it and I want to get back into it. So this one follows Josette Dupre, who is the corp's first female airship captain. And apparently there is a war going on and Josette is captain of a new untrialed ship and she gets Lord Burnett on the ship with her, who is supposed to be sort of checking up on her progress and making sure that everything she does is right and they're in the middle of a war. So it sounds pretty crazy and epic, but definitely a lot of fun. Um, I'm not sure if it's a debut or not, but it sounds like a lot of people have been talking about it, including Becky Chambers, who said it was wonderfully adventurous and laudably detailed, and David Levine, who is the author of Arabella of Mars, who said The Guns Above is a sharp, witty, Ruritanian adventure full of flintlock rifles, plumed shakos, brass buttons, and airships. A winner. So that sounds pretty good to me and hopefully I like it. Next up I have two books I was very kindly sent by Galantz and that is Luna New Moon and Luna Wolf Moon. Both are by Ian MacDonald and they're in a series or a duology, I'm not sure what it is, um, but I've heard really really good things about this series since this one came out and this one is newly out. I think this is a kind of sci-fi story but it was described to me as Game of Thrones in space and so when I heard that I was definitely down. Yeah. And now moving on to all of the books that I bought myself. Some secondhand and some at full price. So let's get started. A lot of these I bought because of Michael and Mercedes, so I entirely blame the two of them. The first one is The Red Wolf Conspiracy by Robert V.S. Redwick, which I saw on Michael's channel. He is called Bitten by a Radioactive Book. I'll put a link to his channel below. And he's recently started making videos again, which makes me so very happy because I love, love, love his recommendations. And he has very similar taste to me. So if you like me, you're probably going to like his channel too. He said this was good. That's all I really needed to know. So I picked it up. Again, going off entirely recommendations, I picked up The Good People by Hannah Kent. I believe this is a kind of literary story and I've heard good things about Hannah Kent generally because lots of people seem to enjoy burial rites by her and then this one has been getting a lot of buzz. I know that Mercedes really, really enjoyed this and she did a buddy read with a couple of other people who also enjoyed it. So I thought I would give it a go because literary fiction is something where I don't really pick it up unless someone I really trust has told me it's good because I don't really have time to waste on bad books in that genre that I don't really know. So I trust Mercedes a lot and hopefully I will enjoy this when I get around to it, but I don't really know any more than that about it. Another one I picked up because of Michael is Space Captain Smith by Toby Frost. This one sounds like it's going to be pretty silly and pretty funny. In the 25 ND century, the British space empire faces the gathering menace of the evil ant soldiers of Ghast Hive, hell-bent on galactic domination and the extermination of all humanoid life. Isambard Smith is the square-jawed, courageous and somewhat asinine new commander of the clapped-out and battle-damaged light freighter John Pym, destined to take on the alien threat because no one else is available. It sounds pretty silly, but kind of like my thing. The next book I have I picked up because of Rachel and Katie, whose channels are linked below. They said I might enjoy this, and it is The Beekeeper's Apprentice by Laurie R. King. When I did my review of the Chronicles of St. Mary series, some of you guys in the comments recommended this to me, and then I saw that they had also read it, so I asked them, and they said it was definitely my sort of thing. It's apparently a kind of twist on Sherlock, with Mary Russell being the apprentice, I believe and apparently it's kind of in the same vein but it's a historical fiction so it sounds very fun and I'm definitely intrigued and excited to start it. Next up I have two non-fiction books which again I picked up because of Mercedes but they sound really really good actually and the first one is A Mind of Its Own by Cordelia Fine and the second one is also by her and it's called Delusions of Gender. I love this cover don't know why this cover is not the same because I ordered the same but it didn't turn up that way oh well I quite like this cover too. I believe that these are, are non-fiction books all about your brain and the connections in it and the delusions in it. Um, and then this one is all about gender, obviously. I don't really know much more about that, but I know she's got a new book called Testosterone Rex as well, which sounds really amazing too. So I'm hoping that I can kind of really enjoy her stuff. I do think I will, because I've heard really good things about her generally as a writer. And I think these are both 
topics that I will find really fascinating. So I'm looking forward to them. Next up, I have a book that I found secondhand and could not resist buying because it's the second one in the series and I already own the first, although I haven't read it yet. It's Under Wildwood by Colin Malloy and illustrated by Carson Ellis. I just have to say that the illustrations in this are beautiful. They're very similar to the cover art, but it's a stunning little series and I do need to prioritise getting to it soon because I've owned the first one for literally years. So it's a kids series, it sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun and hopefully I'll really enjoy it when I get the time to read it. So now that I have two, maybe soon. Next up I have two graphic things that I recently got. The first one is Saga Volume 7 by Fiona Staples and Brian K. Vaughan. I love Saga, nothing else really needs to be said except that it's great, so obviously I picked up the next volume, which I didn't realise was out, but I was very excited when I found out it was. The other graphic novel I have is this one, it's called Crystal Cadets, and it's by Tool. Never heard of this one, but Eleanor was getting rid of some books that she didn't want anymore, and she offered me this, so I said yes please, because it's a graphic novel, and the artwork looks pretty fun, so... Yeah, we're going to give it a go. I really have no idea if it will be my sort of thing, but why not? Next up, I picked up two books that I have heard good things about, but they haven't really been talked about as much in the UK because they are published by Tor and they're not published over here yet. And they are these two. The first one is The Last Song Before Night, and this is by Ilana C. Meyer. And the second one is Ada Palmer's Too Like the Lightning, which I believe has just been nominated for a Hugo, so that's very exciting. Um, they look so nice on the shelf together, just because they're published by the same publisher, like they're not in a series, but they just look really nice. Tor, yes. I love the floppy paperbacks that Tor do. They're amazing. Um, so, let me tell you what they're about. It's about a character called Kimberlyn Amaristo, sister to a cruel brother, daughter of a hateful family, but that name she has forsworn and now she is simply Lynn. A musician and lyricist of uncommon ability in a land where women are forbidden to answer such callings. A fugitive who must conceal her identity or risk imprisonment or even death. On the eve of a great festival, Lynn learns that an ancient scourge has returned to the land of Ivar, a pandemic both deadly and unnatural. Its resurgence brings with it the memory of an apocalypse that transformed half a continent. Long ago, magic was everywhere, rising from artistic expression, from song, from verse and from stories. But in Ivar, where poets once wove enchantments from their words and harps, the power was lost. Forbidden experiments in blood divination unleashed the plague that is remembered as the Red Death, killing thousands before it was stopped and Ivar's connection to the other world from which all enchantment flowed, broken. So I mean that sounds amazing. I think I saw Thomas from SFF 180 do a review of this and he didn't love it, but usually he's quite harsh, so I'm hoping I'll like it a lot. We'll see. I love the idea that it's based on music and stuff, that's really cool. And then the other one is To Like the Lightning, which says, Mycroft Canner is a convict. For his crimes he is required, as the custom of the 25th century, to wander the world being useful to all he meets. Carlisle Foster is a senseer, a spiritual counsellor in a world that has outlawed the public practice of religion, but which also knows that the inner lives of humans cannot be wished away. The world into which Mycroft and Carlisle have been born is a hard-won utopia, built in abundance, but also on the mandatory systems of labelling all public writing and speech. What seem to us normal gender distinctions are now taboo, and most of the world's population is afflicted with globe-girdling clans of the like-minded whose endless competition is managed by all-powerful technocrats. To us it seems like a mad combination of heaven and hell, to them it seems like normal life. Mycroft and Carlyle have stumbled into the wild card that may destabilise the system, the boy Bridger, who can effortlessly make his wishes come true, who can, it would seem, bring inanimate objects to life. It sounds pretty awesome, I must admit, I've heard great things, it's just been nominated for a Hugo. I mean, I had to pick it up. Another one I picked up recently is The Underground Railroad, which I've heard very good things about, by Colson Whitehead. I don't really know an awful lot about it other than I think it has some sort of magical realism elements and historical fiction elements, but it sounds like a lot of people are really, really enjoying this and I'm hopeful that I will as well. So I'm looking forward to getting my teeth sunk into this and hopefully giving you guys a review because although I've heard good things I haven't seen a full review from anyone so 
I'll let you know what I think when I get to it. Tell me if you've read this one. Last few. <laughs> The next one I picked up is a big monster of a book because it is a bind up and this is The Legend of Ellie Mon Press by Rachel Aaron. It is a fantasy series and I believe there are three books in here. The Spirit Thief, The Spirit Rebellion and The Spirit Eater are all in here and it's a floppy paperback from Orbit which is fabulous. Very excited to give this a go because I recently read Nice Dragons Finish Last by her which is an urban fantasy. I really enjoyed it, it was a lot of fun. I've heard good things and bad things about this series so I'm kind of unsure where I'm gonna fall with it but I definitely enjoy trying out new series so I thought I might as well pick this one up and give it a go. It sounds like a fairly stereotypical kind of story about a thief who is supposedly the greatest thief of the age and also a wizard, but I don't know an awful lot more than that and I'm looking forward to trying it out. The next book I picked up is Sephrael's Hand, which is the first book in A Pattern of Shadow and Light, which is book one by Melissa MacPhail. This is a self-published story or a self-published series, an epic fantasy series, which I have been very much getting into. I listened to this on audio. I am about three hours from the end of the audiobook, so I'm not far off, I'm really enjoying it. It looks like it's set to get a very good rating from me, and it is definitely in the vein of epic fantasy, so if that sounds like your sort of thing, try checking this one out, and of course I will be doing a full review of this book when I get to the end, so look out for that. And then the final two that I picked up are Tor.com novellas, so as you can see, they look lovely together too. Tor are doing well in this haul. Um, Proof of Concept by Gwyneth Jones and Dusk or Day or Dawn or Day, which is hard to say, by Sean Ann Maguire. Neither of these have I really heard too much about because they are novellas, I don't really want to go into them knowing too much about them, but I know that this one has something to do with AI, which is always interesting, and this one has something to do with a young girl dying and I think becoming a ghost or something like that. So that's all I really need to know. The fact that they're by, by Tor.com gives me a lot of hope because I know they publish really great novellas and so far I haven't really gone wrong with them. I've definitely enjoyed most of what I've read from them. So looking forward to both of these. And that is everything, which is quite crazy. I would love to hear if you guys have read any of the books I've just shown you or if you have any recommendations based off of what I've recently acquired. Let me know which ones you want me to read and review first. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you very very soon in another video. Bye! Thank you for watching my video today. Go pick up a book and come back and chat with me again.